Consider the expression, and then it says for three marks, so it won't be too bad, simplify this expression to a single trigonometric term. Okay, so if we look at the top, if you look at that entire expression, uh, we know that sin squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1. So if you, have to, if you had to move this over to the other side, you would have 1 minus cos squared x equals to sin squared x. So you see what we have here is 1 minus cos squared x, and here we also have 1 minus cos squared x. So what we can see then is that this 1 minus cos squared x, we can replace it with sin squared x. So we can replace this with sin squared x, and so that's going to be equal to sin squared x at the top. Then at the bottom, we have a cofunction. Now remember, there are four cofunctions that we um, need to know. So they all become the opposite. So this one just becomes cos x. This one becomes um, cos x as well. This one becomes sin x. And then this one's the weird one. This one becomes negative sin x. This cos 90 plus, that one becomes negative. And that's actually the one that they gave us here, the sneaky people. So what we need to do is change this into negative sin x. Because you see we have it there and we have it there. Okay. So we're going to change it to um, negative sin x like that. And so we end up having sin squared x over negative 4 sin x. And so what happens now is that you can cancel out one of these sins, okay? So you can cancel out um, this sin over here with one of the sins at the top. And so we would end up having one sin x left over at the top, and then at the bottom, you're just going to end up having negative 4. So if you want to write this in a better way, you can just say negative sin x, or you could say negative, uh, you, go, you can just put the negative in the front, so negative sin x over 4, uh, you could also write it as negative a quarter sin x if you wanted to, okay? But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, and I realized that all throughout this video, I've been using X instead of A. Please don't shoot me. I mean, that was just a small mistake. It's not that serious, hey, guys? Okay, so, so let's just write down our answer here. We said negative uh, sin X over 4. The next question says, hence, determine the general solution of this. Okay, so what you guys need to do is you need to try see the pattern between these two things. Uh, between this one and between that one. So let's have a look at those carefully. Um, so here they're using an A and an A. Here they're just using a 2X and a 2X. But besides that, everything is exactly the same, right? So we learned in the previous question that 1 minus cos squared A over 4 cos 90 plus A we learned in the previous question that that becomes minus sin. Now, I'll change it to A. Sorry, I, I did apologize, but I was using X's the whole time. Um, we know that that's, that turns into that. So then what they want us to do is to think about what would this become then? Well, you can just follow what we did here. Um, but you don't have to go do everything because they said hence. So we're using the previous answer. So then we can say that 1 minus cos squared of 2X over 4 cos... 90 plus 2x, we can then change that to minus sin. Now you just copy the angle. So if this was a and this one's a, now this one's 2x, so then this one also becomes 2x over 4. Okay, so that's what we can change this part into. So we can rewrite this equation now as minus sin 2x over 4 equals to 0, 0,21. And now this just becomes a whole bra like brand new general solution question. So what we need to do is we need to try to get this sin 2x by itself. So what I would do first, I'll take this 4 and I'll multiply it across. So that's going to end up giving us um, negative sin 2x equals to 0, 0,84. Okay, then this negative, we can divide by that negative. So it becomes sin 2x equals to negative 0, 0,84. Okay, so I'm going to start over here now, or carry on over here, should I say. 
Right, now this becomes a fairly basic question. So what we need to do now is get the reference angle, but you don't put the negative on the calculator, guys. So you're just gonna say shift, for those of you using a Casio, which is most of you, you're gonna say shift sin of 0 0.84, just to get our reference angle. And so um, the reference angle, reference angle, will be uh, 57.14. Now I'm not gonna round off Okay, I won't round off until the end. So that's that. Now, the negative, you might be wondering, okay, well, what does the negative do? Well, the negative tells us that we are in the quadrants where sin is negative. So if we think about our cost diagram, where is sin negative? Sin is negative in the third quadrant. So this is the third quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. So we are gonna go work in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So in the third, okay, so now what we do is we say um, whatever this angle was, so that's 2x. So we say 2x equals. Now in the third quadrant, we always say 180 plus. Okay, I'll carry on with that now. I just wanna show you guys that it's actually just a pattern. Um, in the fourth quadrant, it's 360 minus. That's what we say. Now, over here, we put the reference angle that we calculated, which is the 57.14 value. Okay, and I'm gonna put it over here as well. And then of course we have to remember that boring old part, plus K 360, K is an element of Z. You might use a different letter, you might use the letter N, a lot of schools do that as well, that's absolutely fine. They really don't care about that in the exam. K is an element of Z. Okay, now we just need to go get X alone, so we're gonna get, um, okay, so I'm gonna do it all in one step just to save space, but you're gonna add these two numbers together Okay, and then you're also gonna have to divide everything. Okay, well, let me show you that part. So 2x is gonna be equal to 237.1401196 plus K360, K is an element of Z. Then to get X alone, you're just gonna divide everything by two. Okay, so you're just gonna divide that one by two. And so you're gonna end up getting 118.57 plus plus k times 180. So it's important that you also divide this one by two, okay? So you divide that one by two, and then k is an element of z. And then we're gonna go do the same process for this one over here now. And so if you had to put those two numbers together, you're gonna get 302.8598804 plus k360, K is an element of Z. And now we're just gonna go divide everything by two. And so now we can round off to two decimal places. So that's 151.43 plus K times 180. K is an element of Z.